Welcome to Intro Psychology Unit 7. In this unit, we're going to be discussing memory as it refers to humans. So let's get to it. What do we actually mean by memory? Well, memory is our ability to retain and recall information. And in everyday language, you might hear people refer to such things as a good memory or a bad memory. Well, what do we define by a good versus a bad memory or a not so good memory? Well, what we find here is that a good memory could be one of three different types of memory. It could be something that you're able to hold images or information in your mind for a long period of time. That is, you may be able to recall things that happened to you very early on in your lifetime. Or if your memory is not so good, maybe you can only recall things from more recently and you can't think back to your early childhood. A good memory may also be one that's more detailed. Perhaps if you remember a very traumatic event from your childhood, such as a house fire, you can recall exactly how the fire spread and the sound of the sirens and what the firefighters said when they arrived at your house. Or perhaps you can't recall that detailed information, you just remember being there when the fire happened, but the memory's sort of hazy. And a good memory may be one that holds lots more volume. You don't just remember a few things that are detailed from long ago, but you remember lots of things. And if somebody were to play a Trivial Pursuit game with you, you would be able to retain lots of facts. Versus a not so good memory might be limited in what it can tap into. So those are just some of the possible ways. Now, like most human characteristics, we do find that memory follows a normal curve with a lot of us having an average type of memory, some of us having an above average and some of us having a below average. And so it's important to know that no matter where you are on the curve, a lot of the principles we're gonna discuss in this unit will apply to you. So now that we've discussed what is a good memory, how does memory work? Well, one theory is the information processing theory. This theory was developed decades ago when computers and knowledge about the brain were a lot different than they are today. And how this theory works is the idea that our brains are very similar to computers and that the way our memory works has three major components, encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding is how we make new memories. And so it was thought that there's a part of our brain that imprints and it gathers input, much like in our sensory pathway. So it's thought that this is very similar to a keystroke on a computer or a mouse click. Then there is the storage component to our memory, how our brain actually stores and packages away and files our memories. And it was thought that this was similar to a computer in that our neurons either fire or don't fire. So it was similar to the binary code in a computer. In a computer, as different circuits light up, you can make very complex stimuli like pictures and movies. And it was thought that our brain worked the same way. As different neurons light up in a binary fashion, we can recall scenes from our past. And retrieval is the idea of going and finding a memory from long ago. And it was thought that you have to follow certain synaptic pathways. And if you recall from our earlier units, it's the idea that some neurons only talk to some other neurons and you have to follow the correct pathway to get to those neurons that have the correct binary code that hold our memories. And comparing this to a computer is the idea that you may have to go through the correct drives. If you go through the C drive to documents uh, and, and find the right file folder to retrieve the data you're interested in collecting. So the information processing theory makes it seem like our brains and computers are parallel in their input, their storage and the retrieval processes. However, this theory has been largely criticized. Now, there are definitely cognitive psychologists today that say that the information processing theory still has merit, especially as we try to develop more advanced and dynamic microchips that work in a more neural way. However, there's also been a lot of criticism when we try to compare brains to computers. And that's because as we've learned more about the brain, we've learned that the brain actually works quite differently from computers, at least computers that existed a few decades ago. And that's because when we think about how we encode things in the brain, it's not as simple as what it is in the computer. Computer, if you hit a keystroke or click with a computer or even touch your touch screen, your computer is going to receive that information. Unless your RAM is overflowing and, and your computer is shutting down, you're going to receive that information. But in a brain, we may not take in every stimuli. As we've learned in consciousness, as we've learned with habituation, it's the idea that there's a lot of stuff that's subliminal and there's a lot of stuff we're inattentive to that does not get encoded. Even stuff we're trying to encode doesn't seem to stick. And then we have differences in storage. We find that, yes, your USB drive or your old floppy disk could become corrupted and decayed, but there's usually a magnetic or physical reason for that. 
But with our brain, it doesn't quite become decayed in the same way. We actually find that just through not recalling and not uh, accessing our memories, they can begin to decay and fade through transience. And we can also find that every time we remember a memory, we're not actually recalling the original event. We're actually recalling the most recent time we recall the memory. And every time you think about a certain memory from your past, your brain has the ability to slightly change it in an unnoticeable way. And if you recall one of your favorite memories from long ago and you recall it quite often, you're never actually recalling the original event. You're only recalling the most recent time you remembered it. So that is quite a bit different. And when it comes to retrieval, it's the idea that when you go to find a file on your computer, you hope that it's still in the same spot where you saved it. It shouldn't have moved unless you have malware. But in our brain, because you're constantly relearning and thinking about the, the most recent version, it's changing the synaptic pathway you use to access that memory. And our brains are dynamic and growing. Without thinking about that specific memory, as we're learning other things, the synapses are growing and being pruned in our brain all the time, and the pathways to certain memories can change. And so brains and computers are quite different, and the information processing theory is not a perfect metaphor for how our brains work anymore unless computers become strikingly more advanced, which could be possible.